Hey, Trap Talk listeners, welcome back to the show. Today, we had the pleasure of interviewing Josh Richmond and Jeff Holgeen from the AMU. Army Marksmanship Unit down in uh, in Georgia. So it was a great episode. Uh, got to learn a lot about how they got started with ATA. And they both still shoot ATA, but then in the bunker, the international scene, both been to the Olympics. So it, it just, it's a lot of insight into uh, kind of their path and career and, and uh, what the future has to hold for them. We had a lot of fun. I mean, we, we got in that room at the shot show and we just kind of chilled and asked a lot yep. of good questions and it was just a lot of fun. Um, with that being said, let's get to the show. Well, Rick, before we get to the show, we got to take a minute and thank all of our sponsors because we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, this show is brought to you by Craig off. Yes. Craig off. I've shot one since about 2006. Uh, best gun out there. Balance, customer service, the people at Craig off top notch. Everything you need to know about a good shotgun. That's for sure. Uh, yes. we got to thank Winnick, Winnick Stockworks, custom gun stocks in Lincoln, Missouri. Uh, nice hat, Ricky. Yeah. I, I love my wig. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my winning stock. But in all seriousness, get a hold of Bobby, Luke, or Bill. Get yourself a stock made. It'll change your shooting. I want to say thank you to Remington. Uh, they've supported the show for since day one, and they've supported me uh, for a very long time. Made All-America team shoot nitros and SDSs for many years. And we also got to thank Game Masters. If you're looking for a gun, Ricky, you can help them out. Yep, get a hold of me at Game Masters too. Call me, text me, email me, send a smoke signal. I can get you any gun out there. We carry about every brand available in the trap, skeet, sporting clays, even carry some hunting guns, some hunting rifles, whatever you need. We can I'm going to have to try that smoke signal. I haven't communicated with you that way yet, but that sounds like fun. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> so for uh, the next sponsor, Shot Tracker, uh, we just seen them at Vegas at the Shot Show, and they gave us some great insight on the product. Yep, it's, it's like having a coach on the end of your barrel. Um, they got some new updates coming out that'll really change the game with the shot tracker, make it a little easier to set up. So uh, get a hold of them, get yourself a shot, shot tracker, and, and uh, it'll help you. want to thank you to Shotguns West, Ryan Castani, for being our, our PILA sponsor. Uh, where do you get your PILAs from? They're doing a great job. They've got the new frames out. They're sleek, they're modern, and they look fantastic. Also, really excited about this year's uh, new sponsor, Outlaw Engineering. Yeah, Outlaw Engineering. It's owned by Randy Freston II, uh, R2. Uh, I've known him and his family for years. Uh, his dad's past president of the ATA. Uh, he does a lot of engineering in the oil field business. So get a hold of him for all his uh, engineering needs you got, and, and he can hook you up. Big thank you to White Flyer, uh, making a great target and a great product. We've been smoking those all over the country, right, Ricky? Yeah, they uh, they came out with a new Eco Flyer this year, so hopefully we can get to shoot them at, at some shoots. Uh, I know we did a lot of testing on them, and they are an awesome target, so a little alternative to the pitch target. So looking, looking forward for to trying that out. Another thing that I'm looking forward to seeing more of is SOS uh, Clays. Yeah, the, the SOS Clay software owned by Greg Pink. Uh, doing an awesome job. He's taking over the, the trap shooting world uh, with his software. It's top notch. You know, get a hold of him uh, for any needs you have in the shotgun world. And last but not least, we got gun and trophy insurance. Rick, you got to tell me about that. Yeah, you can get a hold of Cole or Larry Cushman, uh, family owned business, and they take care of all my needs on, on gun insurance. They also offer, offer trophy insurance for all your wildlife trophies. Uh, to ensure them too, but top notch. Get a hold of them and, and they can hook you up. Literally, it's simple. Get online, gunandtrophy.com. You can uh, get a policy going, I think, less than about 10 minutes. Very reasonably priced. That's awesome. Thank you to all the sponsors. And with that being said, let's get on let's to the show. The show. With that being said, Trap Talk listeners, if you love everything about Trap Talk, please subscribe to our page. Also, throw some likes on the videos that you enjoy. It really means the world to us. Yeah, comment on each episode. We read them. We respond to them. With that, let's get to the show. Welcome to Season 2 of Trap Talk. Brought to you by Craig Off. Zach Danini here live at the 2024 SHOT Show. Um, with my co-host Richard Marshall Jr. And with our friends, 
Josh Richmond and Jeff Holguin, uh, fellow trap shooters, yep. that have gone to the heights of our sport. Uh, to the in, Olympics. In, in the bunker, in the bunker, bunker world, world so, yep. um, you know, Olympian. So well, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you guys as well. So Appreciate pleasure it. to be here. So um, before we get started, um, if you could both give us a little introduction of kind of what you've done, your accolades and stuff, and then we'll get into the good questions. It doesn't matter who goes first. <laughs> yeah, I'll go first. Uh, my name's Josh Richmond. I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania, a little town outside of Williamsport. Um, family was always involved in shooting. And at a very early age, I started out in the 4-H realm, um, shooting the clay target sports. Went in the SCTP a little bit, uh, predominantly American trap, knowing from you know the background of being from Pennsylvania, that's a pretty heavy yeah. trap shooting state. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you met me, you guys have been to Aliesburg or Waterloo. Oh, yeah. Aliesburg, that's so great golf country. That's, that's great right. country. Yep, yep. Right there in Osville, PA. So, so at an early age, I just uh, really got involved in trap shooting and uh, found some success at a, at a junior level. Kind of worked my way up through the ranks and then long story short you know found out that olympic shooting was a thing and had a burning desire to become an olympian one day and uh it's a long story but the short version of this is i, I realized that uh colorado springs was a thing a national training center got in front of some coaches made some teams realized that the army was a had a shooting team and that was going to be my path or my best chance of making an olympic team so okay. there's a lot of details in there that we'll get into later but that's the um that was my path and how i got to to accomplish my goals so so what would you say is your biggest accolade uh that you've won in yeah great shooting? question that's um you know it's humbling to look back on this but uh my sport was international doubles trap and it's, it was uh, no longer in the olympics but shot yeah. on the, the 15 trap bunker in the ground um, to run through it real fast, you know, I, was, I was very fortunate to make two Olympic teams. I competed wow. in 2016 and 2012. My top finish was sixth. Uh, but great. along the way, I was able to collect two world championship medals, uh, one in Spain, one in Germany, uh, 10 World Cup medals, as well as three national titles, Pan American Games and CAT Games. So Man. I had a good run. So yes, you did. That's awesome. Yes, how, about, how about you, Jeff? What's your story? Well, I grew up in Southern California. Which is Parazzi land, yeah. the, west, the West Coast, right? Little spaghetti guns. I mean, I was shooting against uh, a couple shootoffs against Dan Benias growing up. Yeah. So, um, and he kind of drove the whole uh, Parazzi brand out there um, in Parazzi USA and Azusa. But anyways, I, I grew up shooting locally, um, ATA. California State shoots Spring Brand when yep. it was in uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, the old days, yeah. Yep. Went to the Grand uh, a few times in Vandalia before that shut down. And then, at, at that time, Lloyd Woodhouse was in charge of the um, Olympic team. Yep. And what he would do is he would invite the state junior champions in ATA Trap, a singles event, to the Junior Olympics in Colorado Springs. So that's how I got introduced into the Olympic version of, of shooting. I did well. Um, at my first nationals, which was in 1997, in men's trap, I actually made the national team, the open national team, by finishing in the top six. Yeah, that's awesome. So the following year, I got, um, I was allowed to join the resident athlete program program at the Olympic Training Center. I did that for nine years. During that time, I shot against the Army Marksmanship Unit. Mm-hmm. When I finished college there, I hadn't quite reached the goals that I had set for myself in the Olympic disciplines. So the Army reached out. They were like, hey, come on, let's go. Joined the Army. Um, a year and a half later, made my Olympic team in 2008. Finished fourth. Good for you. Uh, that was the one that my teammate Glenn Eller won. Won, so that yeah. Was, that was awesome being on the field when that happened. Yeah. Um, and then I've got some World Cup stuff. I've won a couple of World Cups, a World Cup Finals. I've actually got a gold, silver, and bronze from World Cup Finals. Eight World Cup medals in total, and a World Championship silver in all in Olympic double trap. So here we go. Nice. Are. Yeah, I like that. So I remember, um, I don't know, this was probably 15 years ago, but I think I met you the first time at, at Kingsburg, at, yep. uh, at Kingsburg State Shoot. And I could remember watching you shoot doubles because everybody was talking about, hey, this guy, he kind of shoots, you know, his bunker, and he shoots him faster than anybody. <laughs> and I was like, you were so quick. Um, it was just, it was a pleasure to watch you. And um, and that was when I was young and just kind of coming up into the game. But but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a, a big difference in the speed of the targets oh, yeah. from, from ATA to bunker. And I'll never forget the first time after shooting bunker full time, I went to the Spring Grand. And shot an 80 in singles, 8-0. And my dad was like, uh, I 
was like, yeah. I was out, a little quick, yeah. I was out in front of everything. Yeah. Um, but once I learned how to separate the two, yeah. I, it came to be that Olympic double trap was just amazing practice for ATA trap because they just look so much bigger and so much slower. And, and I did well. I, I, I won three California State titles in, in doubles. Double, double. Now, were those any of those consecutive, or were they just kind of spaced out? They were spread out. Were spread out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember you were always shooting up there in the doubles. I mean, that was kind of what you were known for uh, across. You shot the other games well, but the doubles, you were always pretty competitive each day. Yeah, so my family's had a tradition of going to Kingsburg every year. I grew up there, yeah. um, you know, before I even started shooting. I, I was at the state shoot every year since I was born. Um, but there would be times when I lived in Colorado, I'd fly back to the state shoot, and I wouldn't even shoot the whole program. I would just shoot doubles. The doubles <laughs> just shoot the doubles That sounds like fun. Maybe that's we should do that one week. Was, <laughs> nah. That's what I was competitive in. Yeah. So. Well, it, you're, you're in a dis- different discipline, you know, and, and that's the thing. So starting off, you both started in the ATA. Absolutely. Is how you got your, your start. So... I know you talked a little bit about, you know, going to the training center and stuff. And you were talking about with Woodhouse, so that was the same deal with me. In 1989, I think it was, was my first trip to the training center. It was, and they did at those times, it was the top junior in like singles or doubles especially for a trap. And I was top junior shooter, so that's where I went. And, you know, first time there, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And it was under Randy Muller. Yep ran the um, the shooting center, the NRA shooting center, and Lloyd Woodhouse was a coach. And Tom Garrigus yep. was also assistant coach. And I still, Tom Garrigus went in the Hall of Fame for the Trap Shooting Hall of Fame three years ago, I think it was. Might be wrong, but I think it was three. Could be four, possibly. And his wife was there because he had passed. And I st- still have a letter because back then they did at the end of the, the your training two-week camp, because if you were like the top shooter, you got to go for two weeks, and the, the other invites only got to go for one week. The two weeks they paid for, it's like unlimited shells, and we'd shoot. A lot of guys would just come in and shoot 100. Don, me and Jason Booker were trying to just shoot as much as we could. And don't but, ever give Ricky all you can Exactly. You give me all you can eat. All Anything you can all shoot, you can I'm do, in. He's yeah. in. And I never forget the letter, and it said from, it was from Tom Garrigus, might be an okay shooter. Oh. Uh, yeah, but that was back then, because I didn't, I wasn't like, ah, this is, yeah. But as then later on, I didn't pursue it. Just it was, just didn't fit me. I love the ATA, yeah. fine, you know. But I still had a lot of friends and students and stuff. I mean, I remember when you were a little kid, oh, yeah. yep. you know, shooting ATA, and I remember when you were younger shooting yeah. ATA. So seeing where you guys have have been, that's the cool thing about starting, you know, in the ATA. But the training center was always a fun time, and be able to shoot just the target, the speeds, the difference, but I never got into the double trap. I've shot double, bunker double trap one time, and that was at Colorado Springs, and I shot it, and I was like, well, that's not too bad. And then they were like, okay, well, we're closing this down, you guys go, I was like, all right, you know. But did you shoot bunker just at Colorado Springs, or where else did you train for bunker in the United States? Yeah, that's that's a great question. I mean, and, and the bittersweet thing about the, the the topic of double trap is, unfortunately, it was it was no longer in the Olympics after, yeah. you know, after the 2016 game. So, um, you know, it kind of put us all out of business for a sense. But but to answer your question, you know, I had a lot of influence uh, from Les Grevy from, like, the kind of the North Mountain Sportsman's Club that were, yeah. that were kind of in front of this movement way back in, like, you know, early 2000s in the 90s for that area to like try to get some kids to the to the Junior Olympics. Mm-hmm. So I was just lucky that I was in that area. You know, and we did. We, we tried everything. We tried trap, we tried skeet, we tried doubles. And at the time, Lloyd Woodhouse, for me anyway, was really promoting doubles trap because he had like a lot of guys that were shooting trap and then they were would also shoot doubles like a Lance Bay and a Brett Eric yep. and some guys. So they were getting through. But then he realized there was shooters in the world that were specializing in doubles and they were starting to beat us. You know, mm-hmm. and, and just as we all know, like you have to kind of specialize in one event when you're Pick at your this lane. top tier, right? Yep. So he was kind of making a, a unofficial push or recruitment of like, hey, I need some double shooters. Glenn Eller's on the scene. Everyone else is kind of doing both. So we just looked at it, and my coach Les Green was like, "Your quickest way to make a team is doubles. Let's, doubles. let's do doubles. Let's work this angle." And that was really how I predominantly just went that way overnight. Do you think that there's ever a chance that the doubles could come back around, or is that ship sailed? I think today that ship sailed, and it, this is an opinion, obviously, but uh, we have some players in place in the ISSF, and you know, 
that are that are that believe in doubles, but there's a lot that has to happen on a higher level of the Olympic Committee at this point. So to jump in and so, do it, yeah. there was a push to make the Olympic Games 50-50. If there's a medal given for a men's event, then there needs to be a, a medal, medal given for women's. women's event. Yep. And our problem in double trap is when double trap first came on the scene, that's where the women went because they took trap and skeet away from the women. They said, you you only get to shoot double trap. Well, a couple cycles later, women can now shoot trap and skeet Skeet. in the Olympics. Olympics. They all went back to their original sports. The original sports. A women's double trap essentially just withered away and died. So when they looked at shooting and said, okay, how can we make it 50-50? Oh, double trap is men's only. Got to go. Chop them off. You couldn't add. You could only add one if you gave up two is what happens. Well, that makes sense. And isn't there, I mean, and I've heard rumblings of sporting clays possibly in the Olympics, you know, and, and different stuff. So, I mean, I know there's always a push to try to get more yeah, people involved. There's no telling what the future holds. I mean, it's interesting yeah. times. Um, you know, I'm just glad to see it. You know, it, we can all agree that we're glad it's still in the Olympics. I hope it's here to stay. Yeah, absolutely. What that looks like in the future, we don't know. So yeah. I want to spend a little bit of time on on the beginning of the journey because I think we have a lot of listeners on our podcast that are younger yes. and they shoot ATR already, you know, predominantly ATA shooters. They yep. might not have a bunker close or maybe they do and they've never done it. But like if you were going to say, okay, here's some roadmaps to success to go down that road where do they start and where should they be going what should they be working on and you both can answer this with your own opinion yeah so i'll start if you don't mind Jeff. because uh i've been fortunate enough i've been off the gun for about two and a half years i had to deal with some some surgery some back and shoulder surgery um which everything's going better but but i say that to say i've really fully indulged myself in coaching a a high school team in in the georgia area down where i was growing up or excuse me where i was living and um and what i learned there is is you know, giving back is one great thing, but then also just trying to figure out, you know, and take a good look at myself as I'm working with these kids. What was it that got me from A to B yep. relatively efficiently and in the grand scheme of things? And I'll tell you, like I can summarize this in a couple of different bullet points here. I think ATA, regardless of the program you're in, whether it's SCTP, 4-H, or just you're, you just Aim, registered targets, Aim, whatever, yep, doesn't matter. But the, the the level of competition that you can find there, whether it's a local club, state, regional, you can go as far as you want, brand, that when you when you get the good fundamentals, the foundation, and you learn this pretty quickly with a coach or a parent in ATA, and then you can start knocking on the door of winning some stuff local, regionally. It's a great organic ladder to success. And when you learn how to win at this level, the next piece of this of transitioning to an international level is way easier. Um, so, okay. you know, my, my whole summarization of this is, is, is basically use this as a hub. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's great hub. advice because I've heard a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to start with bunker trap. And, and there's some that I know that never won in the ATA and they just kind of said, well, I'm going to go over here. And then maybe they competed at a level locally <clears throat> that was okay, but never were able to get to that Olympic the, level or the Olympic to that stage. higher level. And, and I'm not, and, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not going to say that that's a wrong approach. No. I just think that that's a longer, harder road to go down. To go down. You I mean, need yeah. to start, get in, shoot some of the programs, especially there's so many youth programs there out is. there with between the 4 H, like you said, SCTP, AIM. I mean, the college level. I'm a college, college coach level. too, yep. so I deal with the kids. And you get kids that come in and they're, you know, okay, and you just turn them into better shooters. Exactly. And I've had winning some that wanted winning. to go and shoot in the bunker world. Winning is winning. And right. if you're shooting ATA or the other organizations – you can find a match every weekend. Yeah. You can get more opportunities, right? Yeah. If you, when you jump straight into bunker, how many matches are there? Well, exactly. Not a lot. And that's the thing. I've had a lot of students that, lot. Are, that are like, what what road do I approach? And like, I shoot a lot at the Cardinal Center. Okay. Yeah. They do have a bunker. Now they have multiple bunkers. Yeah. But before when they just had one, I had a few kids that I was doing lessons with. I'm like, well, if you can get down to the Cardinal Center, that's your closest route. But like for me growing up, the closest to me was Colorado Springs right. at the time. Or go, coming down to Georgia. Yeah. You know, there's right. like, there wasn't a lot. Now there's it's multiple. getting better. Exactly. People Not, are building more. There's, yep. So it's easier to find one. Um, but, you know, they're not everywhere. Yeah. But your trap and skeet ranges. Everywhere. Sporting, everywhere. Sporting, sporting clays. Sporting. And, and the big, you know, you can teach anyone how to hit a clay target. Yep. 
can you do it when it matters? Right? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's that's what separates the metal. Because you both had a lot of success in the ATA. Absolutely. Correct. You know, and that transfers over into because it's it's the metal game. Mm -hmm. As long as the, as we all know, as long as the gun fits, shoots where you're looking. Yes. Then at the end of the day, you got the fundamentals, then, but it's upstairs. In the ears, when you when you're actually trying to. I'm still trying to work with Zach. Some of us are slower. Some of us are slower than others. But what, what would you add to that? from what he said, Jeff. Is there any other things that you would say would be helpful for youth that are getting into it or other routes that you would recommend? Yeah, just trying to, um, you know, just just get to the range and seek out tutelage. Good advice. Yes, yes, because there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Oh, yeah. And you got to be able to, and for a young kid, it's hard. Um, but use what works. And, and filter, and you got to try to filter it out. Shoot the first one, and then loop to the second one and drive through it. Ugh. Just like that. Great shot. Shot two. Great shot. We're just trying to help every shooter out there, no matter if you're an expert or a beginner. And this product will take your game to the next level. Works for any of the discipline, as long as it can find a clay in the image. It will figure out how it's moving and how that shot pattern is going to hit. Now, in that shot, I intentionally shot high, which is most person, people do. That's what you did. Yep. So outside the pattern. Yeah. Now, what's it say for the correction of that? One foot. Yep. That'd be correct. Now, in this one, I will smoke the target. If people want to purchase this unit, what's the best way to do it? I mean, is it? Is it through your guys' website? Is there a phone number to call? Or what's what's that situation? Yeah, go to our website and uh, takeintech.com and an online store. We have inventory and we'll see up usually within 24 hours. Huge thank you to Jim and Bob at Take Aim Tech for supporting Trap Talk. So one question I had was, um, is there a point of diminishing return on age? Like, I know we talked about adding some youth shooters in, but, you know, is there a point where you're too old to start transferring over into bunker if you're a successful ATA shooter and you want to give it a try? No, I don't think so. I mean, as long as your eyes are still good, right? Um, I mean, it does demand for some serious reflexes, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, you're still pointing at a, at a trap target. Yeah. Uh, Just a little quicker. Yeah, a little quicker. <laughs> But if you got this, yeah. Kind of like the speed of those targets in Dubai. Remember them hard ones? Not only were they fast, but they were far. So <laughs> we got two things. And we were shooting this this shot that was dipped in something non-toxic, and I'm pretty sure confetti was coming out of my gun every time I shot. Like, I, that, I, was, that was probably something you had done. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's when we went over there, that's all they say. When we do something bad, they go, no, 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 no. But, we heard that a lot was that. Oh, yeah. But no, that is one thing. You know, like I said, I shot bunk. I shot a lot of bunkers as a kid. Loved it. Went to all the camps, you know. Like I said, Woodhouse was a coach of mine. Great guy, very worked very well with the youth. Sure yes. did. That is one thing I, I remember solely is he really a new kid that would come in like never left home before. Right. You know, by themselves and you're out there for two weeks. It's kind of a different. It's a fun time. He made it feel like home. Yeah. You know, and that's what, when I was out there. I mean, I know you know Lack was there and and Bade and stuff. And I you know Lance grew up shooting ATA. Yep. You know, and then transitioned over. So. What about, you guys are both Army shooters. Yes. With the AMU, Army Marksmanship Unit. And how do you get, so if someone is a successful ATA shooter, you shooter, whatever, that really wants to join the military, how would they come about getting into the AMU? Can you yes. talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, the AMU is a really special place. You know, it's uh, we've been compared to the New York Yankees of the shooting world. You know, we have seven different competitive teams. We have we have a good budget. You know, we, we get paid to shoot essentially, and yeah, and, and our mission is to win. But we we also have a mission to get back to the army. You know, so there's there's a couple of different hats that we wear in this organization. Um, I'll talk specifically about kind of how to get on there, but just know it's a wide ranging mission. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are a shooter out there, if you're a youth shooter, or you've, you've heard of us, or maybe this is motivating you to maybe check this stuff out, you know, my biggest recommendation is you have to get into the USA Shooting arena and start registering targets with USA Shooting. We have to see your scores, right? So there's the practice part of this, and then there's like the competition. Like the yeah, yeah. You yep. gotta have it. You know, and you can be as early as 14, 15 getting involved. You know, okay. 
Jeff, Jeff and I both been fortunate enough. We have helped recruitment. We have also helped run this team, manage the team. Yeah. So we've both been involved in hiring and, and firing. This is also part of the job. <laughs> but, um, you know, if, if again, if you're a shooter that wants to look at this, you know, scores in that arena helps. We yeah. see the potential. We hire off potential. Right. So first of all, you know, you get to these matches and then and then we have to look and see if like, OK, this this individual has potential. Do they fit the army lifestyle? You know, because that's a whole nother piece of this mm-hmm. puzzle. Like you are in the army, you're enlisting under contract. Yes, this is a really awesome job, but you owe this requirement. The this day. There, yeah, this is what you have to do. This right. is your job. It's not. Yeah. Absolutely. So and I only bring that up just because, you know, it, it is glamorous to see our lifestyle sometimes. <laughs> it's like, wow, they, they, they follow the world and shoot. And that's it. Well, that's part of it. You know, yeah. We're soldiers first. We are soldiers Absolutely. first. Absolutely. Yeah. Know, and, and we appreciate your guys' service. Oh, we do very pleasure. much. Yeah. In 2023 here, we have done 37 state shoots, seven of the 11 uh, satellite grants. And We're almost there. So, so most of them. We now have, uh, I think it's 241, 242 clubs across the country using our system. If a club was wanting to use you, do you have like a base entry level pricing or packages that you advertise or is it based on the size of the shoots, Greg? Our base level price is zero. Our complete package system, you know, the whole enchilada is zero. Zero is a good it's price. A good price. <laughs> it's good, yeah, it's a good price. Well, the premium members do not pay a pre-squad fee ever. Yeah. For all year. All year. Can yeah. I buy a lifetime membership? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Get me uh, your first yeah, lifetime there, is there a five I year? wanna be number one. Zach, we, we, want, we want lifetime <laughs> memberships for me. We, we've been fortunate that we have a skill set that we found the job in the army that, that promotes that skill set and they can utilize us. Yep. So we are able to give back in that manner. Um, I've deployed to Afghanistan as a marksmanship ship instructor. Never in a thousand years would have thought I would have been there. But again, this this journey has taken me there. You know, it's yeah. qualified me to do that. So. Um, uh, you know, again, I would just go back to we have to we have to see you shooting. So find the USA shooting sanctioned match, selection matches, or national championships. Train up. You have a good couple showings there, and don't be afraid to come talk to any of us guys in the black hat or in, in this uniform on these ranges, okay. because uh, that's really that's your first step in the door. Yeah, and you guys do. I know you do some shooting exhibitions. Mm-hmm. I've seen both of you. You know, at several of them. Yes. And, and which are awesome people. If you guys can get the army team to come, I mean, they do a great job along with our good buddy. Travis Mears, you know, yeah, does, you know, so, and, and that's one of the things I see is a lot of the kids love that, you know, so they come up and, but there's a lot of them that are like, I don't know if I can talk to him. Should I talk to him? It's like, we always say, listen, we all put our pants on the same way, exactly. yeah, no you, matter you, what it you is. Gotta you got to put yourself out there if yeah, you want to exactly. go to that. But also if you're going to be in that limelight, I mean, just speaking with both of you today, you're ambassadors of the sport. Absolutely. So to be that spot, not only do you have to be able to compete at that level, but there's a showmanship side of it too, where if you don't have that, then maybe it's gonna be a little bit harder. I mean, I've seen, you know, Ricky's pretty good at it. He knows how to talk to people. (laughs) Right. But but that, I I think to to wear that hat, you gotta be good in all the areas. You do, and just to touch on that a little bit, because I had a big role in the shooting exhibition side of the house. So you you get in the Army team, and then you have some some unofficial gates there, some expectations you have to make. You, You go under a personnel review, and, uh, and then you become maybe established on the team, which is where I found myself somewhat quickly. And then you start looking at marketing the team, marketing the Army. One of our biggest uh, you know, jobs in the Army is recruitment. We try yep. to help and assist, recruit, yeah. assist recruiters. So that trick show that we're talking about, you know, yeah, it was fun for us, but it had so many other benefits. You know, We can get in front of an audience of kids, mm-hmm. and whether you're in a shooting and you're just gonna take it to college and, and be successful yep. regardless, you know, the Army has over 150 jobs. Yeah. It was a platform for us to come in front of a crowd, maybe laugh a little bit, joke but then just explain like hey mine was shooting and i found a job in the army that like actually can do this can do this yeah, exactly. maybe you could look into it too and then if one light bulb goes off in this crowd and we help someone be successful we all win and that again I, i'm going to circle back to that's a true testament of just what this sport does for everybody yeah whether you take it to the army olympic level or stay in the american field the connections the values that we teach and we talk it's a small family, we'll say, even between trap, skate, sporting, and bunker. Yes. I mean, a lot of people don't, some people that just get in, they're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, how do you know them? Well, I shoot. Right. You know, and I do, I shoot all the disciplines, and I'm getting Zach transferred to shooting, you know, sure. a lot of the disciplines I'm with me. It. And it's fun because yeah. you meet people. You, and that you would never, some people would think you'd never meet. I mean, and, and that's the cool thing about shooting sports in general. But with the Army, I mean, my dad's a, a, a Vietnam veteran. He spent 26 straight months in Vietnam back in the, I think it was 68 to 70, I think. Not a long time. Yeah. yeah. No, and so it was a different era, sure you know. Does. But when I was growing up, 
I mean, I, shooting is what I loved. And I, I didn't join the Army. I was like, you know, there was some good money in, in the 80s and 90s. And sure. so I graduated high school. Well, let's go shoot. We can win. So, and that's the reason I, I thought about it. But I always tell people, I mean, my oldest son wanted to join the Army. And he messed his foot up. And right. the recruiter was like, oh, what? you know, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to Now he's a master welder and does good that, you know, or, or welder. And so... There's always other things like with the college. For me as a college coach, I tell people, hey, come go to school, get an education. Or I had one kid, Ryan Helmuth, shot for me. He was a Marine first. Mm -hmm. He went and joined the Marines. Yeah. Basic, I think he was a year possibly. And then he came to college. Right. Because the military. GI Bill. GI Bill. Yes. Yeah. That's not Smart. That's a good and thing. It was a, and it was interesting because I didn't really, you know, he just kept saying sir to me and I'm like, <laughs> right. call me Rick, call me coach. Yeah. My dad, sir. And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry, sir. I'm like, he's yeah. like, why? Well, and then I but figured that, out. It's becoming more and more valuable because I know, I know, you know, I'm in financial planning and I have a lot of clients that are young and they get all these college loans and debt and it yeah. kind of, it burdens them for many, many years, and it's it's stressful. And right, yeah. I think, you know, I have dealt with, and I have some clients that are in the military with that background, and they use the GI Bill to get them started. At, you know, master's degrees, and you know, they're 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 doing well now. They've got their business or whatever it is they're doing, but they're not burdened with that, and that's such yeah. a huge benefit. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, utilizing education I mean, getting better and smarter. So, yeah. Look, we could do a whole podcast on the benefits of just the Army. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. The and, and I just want to plug them for a second because... <laughs> shameless really, plug. Really shameless, shameless plug. plug. This yeah, is a shameless plug. That. Just because, I mean, it, it, this would help somebody. I mean, if you're a listener out here and you hear this today, like, the sign-on bonuses are at all-time highs right now. Oh, yeah. Recruiting's a little bit down. Right now is an opportunty, like, you sign. Really? Yeah, so I'm... What's I'm, the age I'm, limit on this? Right, exactly. <laughs> hey, hey what's I can uh, die this. What's the weight limit? I can shave it. I can lose LB feet. Right? I need to know. <laughs> don't, run, don't run it off you. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've never had a doctor's bill in my life since I've been in the Army. You know, I mean, you, you immediately start getting a paycheck. Yep. You get college. You get job bill. You have health insurance. I mean, life insurance. It's all done. It's That's all not done. a bad. I mean, it's, so, it, it's, it's something to look at. Guys. It's, it's and you're, not, you're supporting the country. I mean, you're, That's the you're, you're, you're back to if it wouldn't well. be for you God guys, America, we, right. we would not be able to do the stuff we do. True. Without our military. I'm serious. I mean, I, you know, it is. It's our rights and our freedoms. Absolutely. You know, you guys are defending it, so it's it's an amazing opportunity for sure. From what I've seen, and, I, and I've got some friends that have been involved. In like, oh yeah, it's the greatest thing I, they ever did in their life. So what? People just contact a local recruiter. Yeah, Would that's that a good be, question. I mean, so that if you heard something today you like, like you can get a lot of information online. Yeah. Uh, to really get it moving is you have to find your local recruiting office. They're all over the U.S. And just walk in and have a scheduled an appointment. And, and I want to knock down any wall you may have right now. Like, you know, they, they can't do anything crazy. Everything's on a contract. <laughs> Go in and just have a nice conversation with them and see if your goals and priorities align with what the Army has to offer. Yeah. You know, and if it doesn't, at least you can rule this out. Yeah. yeah. It's you know. never bad to learn. That's Correct. Right. No. Correct. Hello, Trap Talk listeners. Zach Danini here, and I'd like to thank our show sponsor, Remington. And today, I would like to go into what shells I use when I'm training and when I'm shooting tournaments. First of all, we start with the Gun Club. This is a great shell. I shoot an 11.45 ounce and 8th 8, and this is what I shoot for singles and both shots of doubles. The only reason I don't shoot this in tournaments is because I like a little bit of a harder shot, a little bit of a harder break, but it works great, and it's the same speed as this STS shell. So this STS shell, a little bit harder shot, uh, figure eight wad column smokes the targets a little bit harder. Also, I shoot for singles and doubles, both shots. And then when I go to the back fence and I want to put the smoke on them, I bring out the Nitro 27, ounce and eight, seven and a half. It's a 1235 shell, blast the targets, works really well. I hope these shells work for you, and I want to thank Remington for supporting Trap Talk. I do want to get into some technical stuff with you guys because we're trap shooters, you know, all around shooter, but you guys shoot a target that's a little faster than what we're shooting. So, and, and you're both shooting ATA. So, to help our listeners with their style and fundamentals, what are you doing differently when you're shooting bunker trap versus ATA? Like, is it different hold points? Is it different look points? Are you guys wider with the eyes, tired with the eyes? Like, let's spend a little bit of time on like your actual physical game. Okay. Um, so, when it comes to shooting bunker there's some seriously wide angles right 45 degrees yeah um and low targets high targets most of us shoot 60 40 if you're shooting bunker okay because because you get some real low targets yeah um and i like to be i like to touch the target 
drive through wanna, the target. I don't float. Um, I don't see any space. And then if the if there's a little bit of wind change and I need to, I, I'm still touching the target. I'm, I'm right. So if, if the targets are high, targets are low. I'm still still on, on the I'm target. On yeah. the target. Um, I don't see lead in bunker, even with those serious angles, just because well the shells are fast. Yeah. And your gun speed, right? You're moving your gun speed. If you're, if you're connected to the target, that's where the magic happens, right? Everything slows down. Um, as opposed to the 27 yard line, if you're shooting, you know, some slower shells, like my brother, he loves to shoot extra light. I can't do it. I can't shoot <laughs> yeah. extra light. Um, you know, there's some lead involved. Yeah. Right? Um, so that's just a little bit of the differences. So, so for you, I mean, just to touch on that, you said gun speed, uh, and you said even with that fast target, you're seeing, you're touching, and you're, and you're breaking it. How much of that shot is with the legs and with the torso, but, and how much of it with the arms? I mean, you guys teach more whole body core turning and rotation, or what are the fundamentals that you guys are using in that? Even within Olympic trap, you'll see different versions of that. The squatting. Um, you'll uh, see a lot of knee bending. Knee bending, yep. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of that. I just like to... I like to emulate Michael Diamond, one of yep. the best bunker shooters ever. ever. I'll show you. Very, very little lower body movement. So your yeah. upper body, you pressing with, with the shoulder blades? I mean, turning from inside in the traps? Or? Yes, that's why I have neck issues right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. so, so, yes. so, and that's similar to how... I shoot trap. I mean, I'm I'm pushing from up here more and less from the lower body. Where Rick, you're you're using. Well, I don't know. I I at the hips is where I am. But I when I shot bunker, that was a big thing. It was they wanted you to squat. And I remember the, the first time, like squat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I said, a down absolutely. Down and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. And what else is like? Well, just try it. When so you I did a little bit, and then though, I stood don't up. Don't you feel like in that squatted position, it's more wobbly? Like like you don't have as much control it, it as that. Could. Everybody's yeah. different. And I would I would want to add one other variable to this, and we didn't talk about the trap guns. So we're talking about trap here, but a bunker trap gun, now, and I'm not telling you not to go try it with your high risk yeah. 30 twinch barrel, it's heavy. But traditionally, you know, just gonna shoot a 30 inch international trap gun, which you're still gonna see a Monte Carlo comb, but these barrels are lighter, shorter, faster. So flatter that's ribs. a flatter ribs, yeah. generally flatter ribs. You know, you'll see a couple variations of that. Uh, but in general, you know, and I'm not gonna say that no one's shooting a traditional ATA trap doubles gun there, but yeah. you know, so that lighter gun also helps that move off the house. Shorter the barrel, lighter gun, flatter rib, Correct. traditionally. Correct. Not as many guys what, shooting these big old high ones. Why do you think I've always shot a 30 inch? inch? Yes. I've always yeah. shot a 30 inch over and under yeah. forever. Shot a 30, didn't yep. you? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And I shot, I mean, back years ago. And this could be an arguable debate Absolutely. Forever, you know, so but, it's yeah, it's, everybody's different. But, yeah, but the shorter barrel, the lot quicker. Yep. I mean, I know the last time I shot Bunker, I was shooting a Katie. I tried my trap special. I was like, eh. And I had a, a flat rib. So yeah. I grabbed it because I was shooting Janessa Beam in there at the train center. And, and Brett was still the coach. And I walked out with my sporting gun, and I think I broke nothing but 23s and 24s where I broke like an 18. With, and I was like, okay. And that's what it was, a little flatter point. But I only shoot 80, 20, but that sporter's about 65 to 70, and I drive through. But I understand what you're saying. You're more like Michael Diamond, where he's more upright, not the squat. Because I think the squat, I mean, you are, but then you, it's almost like a timing issue it for some people. Be, you know, again, yeah, everybody's different. Targets are getting away from you quickly. Yes. So there's the the, the backup to your, like, I, I'm getting beat is a panic throw. I'm yeah, that, throw. That, that front can, arm. That can be dangerous. Yeah. So, you know, are, so is it more common to be on the house in that game, kind of like me and Ricky shoot trap, or where are you doing on hold points? There is a big, have you ever <laughs> seen Derek Mine shoot bunk? Oh, yeah. And how high he holds? Yeah. There aren't many people in the world that can hold that high. So, but but for me, it wasn't it wasn't as important as where I was holding my gun. Where you're looking? It's my eyes. Eyes for you. It's all I because I could experiment and move up and down, up and down with my gun. Yeah. It was where are my eyes at? To, to so where do you like to keep them? I mean, generally there's that dot out in front, right? right. Your lane. You have a right target, a left target, and a straightaway target on each. It yes. Right at some angle of that, Essentially, right? Yeah. Essentially. They're all yeah. different sch schemes. Change. Schemes. That's the correct verbiage. Yeah, yeah schemes, 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 right? Schemes. Yeah, I remember that. Schemes, so, like so, so one through change. 12. Yeah, yeah, exactly just right. say we have a hard yeah. right angle, a hard left angle, and then the straightaway somewhere in the middle. Are you trying to cover the circumference of that area with your eyes, or are you coming tighter? Or what, is it, it a higher area? or? 
so many variables come into play. Yes. How tall are the carousels on the track? On the tracks? How far down in the bunker are they? How far back are they? Is there a left-handed machine? Matt Arellis have left left-handed yeah. machines. In Tucson, there's left-handed machines. Yeah. So you, your, your targets should come out of an area like that. Yeah. yeah. In Tucson, they're like that. It's yes. Like this. So because of the left-handed machine. Correct. Yes. So now, what is the angle on that left-handed bird? If it's a 45, it's going to come out on the mark. If okay. it's any less. It's ch -ch more and so more. So as that more. angle gets wider, your eyes go wider. I gotta, I gotta change my look point. Look point. So as, as, they're tight, as they're tighter, we go tighter. And I think when we're talking ATA, for me, mm -hmm. I'm trying to cover the area where I can. Well, see that's the what I always try to. I have a great peripheral vision. That's why I have to wear blinders. Because yeah. like I can be out there shooting, and you know our buddy Rich Buller be shooting. I can see Tapping his foot his tapping. <laughs> I can see Zach down there doing the uh, flip, 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 flip with it. And I'm just like. Oh you think God. he'd be <laughs> mentally tough with four world championships and a little tap? Listen, listen. I mean, come on. I'm gonna tap. I'm going to use the Italian tap. Yeah. But it is true and that's where I do is I try to just, okay, and I'm on a station say or a post, say I'm on post one. Well, I know I just got to look in this area. Yeah. I don't need to go wide. Now, I understand that the soft focus and bunker and trying to let it pan out a little bit, but yeah, the higher the gun, like Derek, I mean, he does hold a higher gun. Who else used to hold a higher gun? I mean, um, Derek Haldeman shoot for the Army team. He's, he's creeps up yeah, there a little bit. Who they, shot? They all try it and train it a little bit. Who was it? Brent was always a pretty high gun So, so in that yeah. high position, they're looking under and they're trapping it, like getting ahead of it and putting a shot ahead this way, or are they coming back down, or what's that move? So let me, let me paint this picture real quick, especially to the, to the listeners that haven't seen International Bunker. The, the houses are ground level. Yep. So when we say high, don't take it out of too much out of context. They're not quite parallel, or if they are, they're probably yeah. still pointing down. With the bird that's flashing, the reason why this works a little bit is when they're holding up higher, they're kind of eliminating all this stuff going on down here that's a little bit unnecessary. The flash. Maybe I'm the seeing flash. too much of it. It's telling yep. my hands it's really faster than what it is. And they're picking it up kind of, they're trying to pick up the bird relatively parallel to their gut. At a slower spot. Their, correct. So they're still kind of getting beat by the bird, if you will, because again, this this game is one of the reasons why it's so so challenging is because there's really not much room for error. Yeah. You know, in ATA, it's a little more forgiving, I'll say. You know, my whole point doesn't have to be exactly pin dot on, and I probably can still get through a 25. Got it, right? It may not have felt the best, but I still broke 25. Yeah, exactly. Here, like, if you're off by a pin dot, you might drop four targets. Yeah. And you just threw a 19 in this round. You're like, what's going and on? And you're out. And you're kind of out. Because with the you competition know, level yeah. now, I mean, I, I follow up on the, I watch you guys shoot and stuff, and right. it's cool to see that, you know, and I'm, someone will say, oh, you know, them guys, I said, I remember when they were that tall. Exactly. You yeah. know, type of stuff. <laughs> but it is interesting because now, especially in the men's there and the women's, mm -hmm. the scores are, you know, in a 125 match, I'm seeing a lot of 123s and, and above where 15, 20 years ago, topic, you know. You know, so in the U.S. right now, if you were to ask me, like, what's it going to take to win this match? 123 or better. Uh, you know, yeah. I would say that that's going to guarantee Depends you. on the range. But yeah. you didn't look at a 23 average. Would I be blind by saying that? I mean, if you're going into a selection match and don't know what to, where to set your goals, the leaders are probably going to be hovering around a 23 average, give or take a bird, lightning, weather, pressure, yeah. what have you. If you want to guarantee, like, I'm in the final and I'm in a position to win. I hope I don't eat those what's different, what's different? What's different about your game versus our game is, from what I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you want to make the final. Correct. And you're going to do that with the top six scores. Yes. Correct. And then so, everybody and then goes there, to zero. Resets, right? Yes. So yeah. technically, if you make the final, you could be the lowest shooter of the day. Number six. Number, number six. six. Yeah. And could still and win. And then go out and run 24, 25 single barrel shots yes. and win the whole tournament. Absolutely. Where in our well, deal, we don't get a reset. It's, no. It's, and you know, most of the well, time can't miss. it is in our deal in singles, we break 200. We are reset. Right. But same type of deal. But how but many targets? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's My 194 don't make it. The clay no. How many targets do you shoot in the missing out? Well, or not missing out. We'll just call it the it's an elimination, elimination round. round. It, so yeah. doesn't it go like? Don't you shoot a minimum of like ten or something? It's or, a marathon now. Yeah. yeah, and then it's, it's so many. If, miss, okay, then the, they're out. Then the top six will shoot. We're talking bunker now. Yeah, yeah. The top six will shoot twenty-five single barrels. Okay. Six place sits down. Then, okay. Then they'll shoot five more. It's a pass, right? You okay. Each, each time it's a pass. It's right. one pass, five, five targets, um, but you're moving each time, right? Yep, so yep. Fifth place to sit down. And, and then, then... And you just keep that going, going until, until you get to the top two. They'll shoot ten more. 
Uh, a total of 50. 50 okay. for that. So, so, so it, you know, the first 25, everybody gets a whack at it, and then pretty much you know if you broke the 25, boom, it's over, you're done. There's it, one more variable worth mentioning. So your back tag going. number, you know, like the number six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you're thinking like, oh, I made it in, I'm, I'm starting from scratch. No, you're still ranked one through six. So if everybody ties, you're by still default, six. Six is oh, so and you that becomes beat, a factor. You gotta beat them. Yes. So it, yeah. you're in the final, but you really can't miss. It isn't like the old days yeah. where. You were, say, you win a match and you no. broke a 124 and, and you broke a, a 121 and you're in, okay, and say you're one and you're we are five. Not exactly. you're, you're not, there's not a four target lead anymore, Correct. a three target lead. Right. Where where it was before. Now it's exactly. just everybody's back to it's zero. Everyone's back to zero, but you're also you have a tie with one Yeah, yeah. Yes. If you had the better qualifications score. score. Yeah. yeah. So and that you want to go in with a high bid number. Yeah. It pays off because a tie. If you, you don't win. miss, you can't lose. That's a, that's the best advice that's you could get. Best right advice here. I can <laughs> That's what I tell everybody when we're shooting. I'm like, hey, turns. if you go out there and do your job, <laughs> yeah. the only thing they can do is tie you. That's right. Hello, Trap Talk listeners. Today's episode is brought to you by Winnie Custom Gun Stocks. That being said, a custom gun stock is going to elevate your game to get the same fit every single time. And I can attest to that. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my winning custom gun stock. I haven't broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds, <laughs> Rick, but I ha did break a uh, 100 from the 27 within seven days of getting my stock and broke two more that year and loved it. Here, this is okay. Did okay. you take it or me? We'd like to thank winning custom gun stocks for supporting Trap Talk. That being said, everyone knows. Oh. Winners shoot winning. Are we doing the end work? So, Josh, with you, your style, is it similar to Jeff's where it's on the house and you're driving through yeah. the bird? Yeah, Same I'd like to impacts. talk about that because I, too, am, am in dabbling with ski, sporting, uh -huh. you know, trying to educate myself, coach everything. You know, I, I'm taking much more of a neutral approach. You know, my American trap stance growing up is different than my double trap stance slightly. Yeah. Um, and then I'm now at this point where I'm, like, kind of instructing the boxer stance. I like my hips back, my weight slightly forward over my, you know, just on my toes, and I'm just in an athletic position. And I'm just trying to, you know, my whole game right now is about connecting with the target. And I'll quote Dan Carlisle because that's I've had a big influence from Dan Carlisle. But, yep. um, you know, anytime I have my barrel and my bird matched in the speed, great things happen. I can see it all. It kind of slows down and I can put the voodoo on it, if yeah. that makes sense. So we'll you know? take a second there. Yeah. Barrel, bird, matching speed, because I think a lot of people a target flashes in whatever game they're shooting, you know, it flashes, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh crap, I'm behind, and then they throw the gas on, and they whip, and they whip, and they get Arm to the shoot. front edge, yes. and then once they're in that front edge where they're like, okay, we're losing vision, then they slap the brakes on, and then bad things happen. So, no man's so, land. No man's yeah. land. So, so when you're talking about that, yeah. how, are, <laughs> how are you controlling that side of it? Do you believe that that's all with vision, that that's all with connection and scene? I think so, and, I, and I, you have to train this in my mental routine as well. So you can't panic. You know, the less I panic, the better it is. Now, easier said than done, right? Yeah. But when you when you truly work on it and train it, you hopefully your percentage of not getting into that position goes higher. But my main focus of like, and again, to eliminate any of this confusion is. When the bird appears, my only main goal is to get the barrel to the bird. And you know, and in trap, this happens pretty instinctively, so we don't have to really think it. Yeah. Shooting long crossers in sporting or American ski, this is way more way, visible. It, it is more sense. Zach understood in Dubai. Right. Well, yeah, I, I just <laughs> yeah. think that there's something He's to like, be said. He's like, where's that at? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's over there. It was, yeah, way <laughs> over there. But, but there's something to be said because where I'm at, I'm on the house in, in ATA trap, mm -hmm. and I could potentially get the barrel to the bird quickly but then in that spot it's not the premier spot to break the bird like i could get right. it you know four or five feet out of the house if i wanted to but the reality is for me i don't want to shoot anything under that zone yeah. because right. it's not i know let me not talk ideal. about that in trap specifically so my, my thoughts of this in trap is like you still let the bird get up and get out you start to move off the house and i'm not getting there as quick as i can in that sense it's that timing that's how i'm building in my timing I want the barrel to the bird in that the start of that that sweet spot. So then I'm only connection is, is maybe a foot and a half, two feet. Bit, so that's bit. the critique. But what I'm finding is that technique works in sporting, ski, trap. You just have to critique. But it not in bunker. Out. So in bunker, you're coming out. And you see that? You see that streak? It you're does. catching with the eye, and you're you're coming all the way until break point, right? It I mean, works. there's never a let it go, Correct. right? You're not wanting there's to no let time it. to. It's gonna beat you. Yes. Yeah. It's gonna beat you. It's right. a game of how well can you make it. Right. Did you ever shoot much bunker? Yeah. I mean, I've shot a few times. Uh, and, and what I what I realized when I shot it my best was 
it's going to beat me. And if I didn't get too nervous about it and right. just said, okay, get my eyes on it, the better and quicker I can get my eyes on it. And the smoother I was with the gun movement, the better well, I shot. They, they always say smooth, and, and I do this in American Trap when I teach, is if you're smooth, you're quick. Yes. It's when you're jerky, you're not quick. If you kind of don't see it and you're like, oh, crap, and then do one of these, it's game over. But yes. for me, I felt like yeah. if I got my eyes on it and I just said, okay, my eyes are on it, and I made that move, that was when I was hitting them more in the center. Yeah. Um, and, and similar in trap, if you don't see the target well, and you do one of these, you know, jerk moves, it, it never ends well. No. Great things happen when you have your eyes in the right spot. Yeah, you know, that, that's going to eliminate a lot of this theory. Do I swing through? Do I pass through? Do I lead? Do we? Oh, no, no, no. Like, if you're, you're not even seeing that a lot of the times, you're just you're, you're, you're seeing the bird you're, well. You're so and focused, and that's your guys will tell your hands what to do. And that's one you know, thing. Hopefully. So practice wise, how much? Tra- I know you guys shoot a lot because you both were stationed in in, uh, Georgia, in Fort Georgia Benning. at yeah. Fort Benning. And of course, they got a beautiful shooting facility there for you guys. But how much practice did you guys shoot? Was it every day? When you're training, or it depending, it de- if you had a match coming right. up, like in What's say a month, up, you know, know, where are we at in the calendar? Okay, right? if I just got on the plane from the Middle East from a big match somewhere, okay, yeah. I'm gonna take a few days off, right? Um, and then leading up to a match, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna work on stuff, right? Yeah, and you're gonna pound it out, and then when you get closer, it's okay, I'm good. Feather off, let's you're main, good. Let's just maintain, maintain and maybe tweak some stuff, right? Okay. That way, when I get to where I'm going, I'm not, I'm not training. Yeah, I'm you're not thinking. Up. You're just, yeah, you're just going out. Okay, good war. Yeah. Let's get yeah. used to the, the facility, the background, yep. my low points, stuff like that. Because that all changes. A diff- I've seen. Oh, yeah. I mean, all the matches. I watch them on, you know, on the uh, ISSF. Um, yeah. dot com. I think it is or what dot org. Whatever yeah, their TV. Yeah, their they TV deal. Yeah, I've YouTube. watched the matches you've shot in. I've yeah. watched when Derek shot. You know. And it's cool to, to watch, and you see the backgrounds, and you see some of these these shooting facilities, and you're like, it's right in the middle of the, mm-hmm. the city. Yeah, so one of you know. mean, my first Olympic Games in London, they, they built the temporary range downtown. They put a green screen up. I remember that. 300 yards out, you know, for the buffer, and there were people walking behind on the sidewalk. It was one <laughs> of the reasons that I don't believe I shot the best there, because I could not get my first hole point Your down. Your hole points are up in that yeah, I, screen. My gun was up in that you screen. You have no reference point, because there's nothing to pick right. off. It all and looks say, the same. And yeah. Really They're over there there. getting tea and crumpets, you know? and you're trying to find a hole point. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, Damn exactly. London. It's tough. Yeah. So I had a yeah. hard time with that. You know, I, I never yeah. never had the time. And oh, by the way, you know, one, another one of the things that makes this more challenging is in the Olympic Games, like you get one practice day. That's like, it. You got. I had three rounds on the ranges, and it was go. That's and it. This, that range is not existing. Wait. You know. So, yeah, I was just saying. I mean, a lot there's of more chance. Gone. I mean, yeah. you kind of yeah. wake up that day, and it's either your day or it's not. Because at the right. end of the day, you could do all this training, all this work, but then it's like that's the day, right? Yep. And mm-hmm. I've woke up. And sometimes your eyes just don't kind of feel as good as oh, you want them to. And, hey, I, I've you walked know, out there in the morning shooting, and I'm like, you know. Like, sometimes that's Yeah, something. it's my gun, yeah, but yeah. I'm like, you don't see the best. And then, I'll, you know, and, and it has been caused by the late night. Every once in a while it does, but, you know. Self-inflicted. Self-inflicted, yeah, a little bit. But it is one of those things, and that's what I always say. is like, listen, get a good night's sleep, you know, get a good breakfast. I'm always, you know, my son Tyler's here with me. He's been shooting now three years doing that. But that's hard to say, get a good that. night's sleep, because sometimes, I mean, if I was – going to shoot in the Olympics tomorrow, and it was my first time, I don't know how much, well I'd be sleeping. I'd be like, well, right, was Zach, my first. we're not worried about you going to the Olympics right now, <laughs> but at your age, you know, but no, it is one of those things, Is but and I've heard that hard, from people. Right? I mean, that night so, had so to be a hard the night The level to sleep. of pressure that you, so I started feeling, everyone gets this differently, but I started feeling the Olympic pressure for me 45 to 50 days before I left. And it starts to creep in, and, and you don't. This is hindsight now. I didn't recognize it then, but you yeah. start. Well, how could you're you? shorter on your conversations. You're not sleeping because well, you're a little yeah. agitated, but you yeah. don't really. You think everything's good, and you're in control. True. Yeah. And you had the, one too many coffees. All right. Day long. That's exactly right. And then the minute that games was over, and you went, Whew, "What just happened?" And you, then you feel it, and you're like, "I was, oh. I was an animal." Like, yeah. So you're kind of numb, in my experience, going through that. No, you're not sleeping great. I mean, but you're telling yourself you are. You think you are. Um, it's a, it's an animal like I've never stood on a competition field before. Like guys, I'm telling you, like there's nothing I can say to also, even. It's the highest me. level of shooting, without a doubt, that you can do. And you know, and both of you have reached that. Right. You know, yeah, that's one thing. Like I said, I never, I, I didn't inspire to to make the Olympics or anything. My mentality back then was a lot different. Of I was doing it. I was wanting to win money. Sure. Yeah. I, I was literally like, this is, that's right, mama need new pair of shoes. But it was, it was like, I was, yeah, so, 
where versus you know you both are in the military and that was kind of a path and you and you made it work and that's so awesome that we have this and just like you know said earlier college teams you can go to school yes get scholarships that's a, a great thing that's going on now because the youth is the future of our sport you, you know i think we could all say that it's safe to say now if you're a youth young shooter, yep. you, you maybe you maybe the funding's an issue, maybe my equipment's an issue, but you have drive and determination. There's a program out there right now that will get you to the goal that you have in your head. Absolutely, if you want it, so you can that's have there. it. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you know you got you got to have the drive. You got to have a little talent. Obviously, that sure. doesn't hurt. But yep. I think nowadays there's more opportunity out there than you'll there's find ever your path. Been. Yeah, no matter if it's if you're if you're just shooting trap or sure. if you're just shooting ski. You're shooting sporting clays. I mean, listen, well, the, yeah. you can all those paths can take you to the Olympics, or if the to the highest level, just or college, or whatever. Absolutely. Like, what if? I mean, for for some people, maybe they just use shotgun shooting to get an education, go to college, and then start their career. I mean, if that. And then they come them, back. You know, motiv Look, almost all absolutely. my friends that I shot with in 4-H have a college degree or successful. Absolutely. And the common denominator we have is we all grew up shooting together. Absolutely. Well, the good so, news is, is when you're shooting a shotgun, you don't have any extra money for any bad habits. Right. So, <laughs> Yeah. So it, it allows you so to, to that. You, you stay yeah. focused. And, and that's yeah. how Zach did. He, Zach did other things. I, like, I didn't know. have money for anything yeah. else. Right. It was good. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners today? I mean, you guys have been a wealth of knowledge. Yes. We appreciate your time. I know Absolutely. how busy you are here at SHOT Show this week. So yeah. um, awesome. any other closing thoughts? It was just great spending time with you guys as well. I mean, getting our story out is our is our goal now. Me and him are both kind of at the end of our international careers. Um, I'm retiring, shooting from the army. He's not far behind me. You're gonna see us out on the ranges again soon, guys. Like keep we'll be your eyes open. looking for you at the ATA shoots. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. Um, but you know, we're both passionate about giving back, like you guys are. And I think yep. just to culminate this whole talk, like I'm super happy to have the opportunity to give back to the youth. And by all means, if anyone sees me out of range anytime, please come over and talk to me. Yeah, Josh and Jeff, both great guys. They're they're outgoing. You know, they won't shun you and like, oh, don't talk to me. They'll come up any questions. So that that's the great thing. I had thing. coaches growing up like you all did that did that for me. And it's at least I can do. It. Absolutely. So, so. It's always good to give back. Well, we, we appreciate you. Thanks so much, Zach. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. What did you want to say? We don't want to hey, miss thanks, that. Thanks, Jeff. The, uh, the Olympic trials in Paris coming up. I yeah. just want to wish everybody good luck. And uh, we'll see who makes that team in USA. Go Team Absolutely. USA. Team baby. USA. That's Thanks right. for tuning in. We'll see you next Friday. And the Trap Talk podcast is brought to you in part by RM Shooting Clinics. Have Ricky take your game to the next level. If you want to shoot hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, give Ricky a call today. Zach and Nini Financial. We believe in putting people first. Oh, oh.